Computer Programmers and all lovers of mobile confectionery. In this video we're going to explore how to detect beacons with the Android Beacon Library. G'day, I'm Chris Muir from the Oracle Mobile Platform team. Okay, what we're going to do here in two videos is explore working with Android and beacons with Oracle's mobile cloud service. Now this first video is aimed at anyone who hasn't worked with beacons in Android before, where we're going to take you through how to write code using a third party library called the Android Beacon Library. However, if you're a seasoned Android developer, we suggest you skip on to the next video to cover how MCS can aid you specifically with beacons in Android. Still with us? Great, let's continue. So, Starting out, unlike iOS, which has beacon support built into the operating system and core location services, for Android currently there is no equivalent operating level system support or anything in Google Play services. As such, your choices are to use the low level Bluetooth libraries or a third party library. Now working with the Bluetooth libraries is actually fun if you love programming with devices and networks. However, you will be coding beacon support from the ground up. You really need to know your stuff, and by this I mean you need to know how to work with Bluetooth, all the low level details, and also beacons as well. And you will need to cover all the edge cases that come with using these technologies. You will need to be an expert. As such, I recommend you go with a third party Android library designed to work with beacons to assist you. And from my personal experience, with an appropriate library you can have this up and running in under one day. In fact, I got it up and running in half a day. Now, there are several choices. There are various libraries provided by various beacon vendors and third parties. And also at the same time this video is written, Oracle itself has no recommendation or specific partner for beacons we'd like to put forward to you. However, for the purposes of getting you up and running on Android, for this video we're going to explore using the Android Beacon Library, which isn't a part of the operating system, but rather is an open source beacon library created by Radius Networks, who are manufacturers of beacon technologies like the Rad Beacon Dot. The Android Beacon Library is available under the Apache 2 license, and out of the box is capable of scanning for alt beacons, but it can also be configured to scan for other technologies such as iBeacons and Eddystone 2. In order to work with the Android Beacon Library, there's essentially six tasks. Yeah, we've got the right amount of fingers here. We need to perform in our app in order to work with beacons in general. First, we need to add the Android Beacon Library, the third party library, to our project. Next, we need to request permissions to use Bluetooth and location services in our Android application. Then, from the Android Beacon Library, we need to define a Beacon Manager object and a Beacon Consumer implementation to handle the Beacon events that are raised during the life of the application. We then create a Beacon Region object with the Beacon UUID, Major and Minor identifiers we wish to listen for. We're then good to start monitoring for the Beacons, which will raise Beacon events that our Beacon Consumer will act upon. And finally, at some later point to save battery life, we need to stop monitoring for the Beacons too. Okay, so we'll now demonstrate all of these in a very simple application with a single page and some buttons to kick off various code snippets in the relating Android activity. For our first step, we need to add to our application's Gradle build file the repository JCenter to download the Android Beacon Library from. And then the Android Beacon Library as a dependency itself. In this case, I'm attempting to pick up the latest version 2 library. Having done this in Android Studio, we then click the Build Sync button so the new library will be downloaded from the repository. Now, keep an eye out for any sync errors or warnings that say you're working in offline mode. And if you do see this, you can switch to the online mode via the Android Studio, Preferences, Build, Execution and Deploy options, Build Tools, Gradle, and then finally playing with the offline work option. Next, in our application, we need to seek permission from the user for both Bluetooth and course location privileges by adding the following permission request to our Android manifest. And of course, as of Android API 23 and above, for what Android refers to as dangerous permissions like access course location, we must also programmatically request permission from the user at runtime for this permission via a call to request permission that I'll add to my onCreate method. 
Great, so after adding the libraries and the permissions, we're now on to coding. So next in our code, we need to add a Beacon Manager object and a Beacon Consumer implementation from the Android Beacon library. We first define the Beacon Manager in our activity and call the method getInstanceForApplication to create or fetch the Beacon Manager singleton for the app. Next, we need to supply the Beacon Manager a Beacon Parser with a set layout. Right, from 15,000 kilometres away in Perth, Australia, I can hear you asking, what is a Beacon Parser and what is a Beacon Layout? Well, with the Android Beacon Library, it is capable of scanning for different Beacon technologies, such as Alt Beacons, but also iBeacons and Eddystone, based on the Bluetooth advertisement packet that the Beacons transmit and your mobile device picks up. Now, rather than providing native support for all these beacon technologies, including beacon technologies that have yet to be invented, the Android Beacon Library lets you define what that package structure looks like, essentially a layout, which you can then pass at runtime to understand what's in the packet. Which is all fine if you love low-level details like this, but I must admit I was freaking out a little bit. What, I have to define these myself? How do I know what they're going to look like? Luckily, however, I then discovered the beacon layouts for different beacon types are readily available on the internet, and here are some examples I've included on the screen. Now, in looking through these examples, they do seem pretty foreign or alien, I'd agree. So, it's worthwhile having an idea how to read these layouts, so let's explore some of them now. Let's look at alt beacons and iBeacon layouts. As you may know, an alt beacon and iBeacon are made up of a UUID, major and minor values. These are the identifiers of the beacons that get tr transmitted. If you read the alt beacon layout, what it says is the Bluetooth packet for the alt beacon will have as its second and third bytes the hard-coded string BEAC. In fact, BEAC, short for beacon, representing the manufacturer of the alt beacon radius networks. Then the 4th to 19th bytes are the UUID value, followed by the 20th to 21st byte, which is the major ID value, and the 22nd and 23rd bytes carry the minor ID value. Remember, the UUID, major and minor, identify the beacon itself. And finally, the 24th byte carries the device's power, and the 25th byte carries an optional data payload that is unique to old beacons. So why is this useful to know? Well, later in code, when the Android Beacon Library detects this alt beacon, as we've defined this specific layout to have three IDs made up of the UUID, major and minor values respectively, we will then extract these three IDs to work out which beacon we have actually detected. As you can see, the other beacons had their own layout structures, and I'll leave you to research these to learn what the packets carry, what the individual parts of the packets actually have in them. So returning to the code for this demo, I'm going to detect an alt beacon, so I'll include the alt beacon layout as a constant. Having defined the beacon layout, we must then bind the beacon manager to a class that implements the Android beacon library beacon consumer interface. In order to do this, I'll extend my main activity to implement the beacon consumer interface. This allows me then to bind the beacon manager to this activity. Now, as the main activity implements the beacon consumer, a required method for the beacon to consumer is the on beacon service connect method. When the beacon service starts, the on beacon service connect method is called, and it's here you have the ability to set up various notifiers to react to beacon events. First, with the beacon manager, you can set up a monitor notifier, which allows you to define methods did enter region and did exit region. These methods are called when the mobile device enters or exits a beacon region. Essentially, these are your event handlers. Via these methods, you have access to the region object that raised the event, which includes access to the ID of the region, but more importantly, methods to get at the separate identifiers of the beacon region. As you might remember from the beacon layout for old beacons we used earlier, the three identifiers relate to the beacon UUID, major and minor values. Now, for demo purposes here, we'll simply show the region identifier and beacon identifiers via an alert. But again, remember, in a real app, you can add any logic you choose here. It's really up to you, depending on what your app's requirements are. Now, conversely, if rather than monitoring for the device entering or exiting the beacon region, you want to range instead, you separately set up a range notifier with the method did range beacons in region. And again, for demo purposes here, I'll simply show an alert when this event is detected here too, outputting the region and beacon identifiers again. 
having finished defining the on beacon service connect method you're in a position to start actually monitoring for a beacon represented by a region to do this you construct a region object you then first give the region an id essentially a unique name which allows you to distinguish one region from another if you decide to monitor for more than one region next you supply the beacon identifiers so let's say we're going to scan for a specific alt beacon with the following UUID, major and minor values. From there, if I want to monitor for the device entering and exiting the beacon region, I call the start monitoring beacons in region method. And alternately, if I want to range for beacons, I call start ranging beacons in region. And then finally, conversely to stop monitoring for beacons, we just call the opposite stop methods. Great, so you've got all the programming tasks out of the way. Let's move on to testing. Now, in order to test beacons via Bluetooth, you cannot do this by the Android emulator, unfortunately, as it doesn't provide any Bluetooth testing facilities. Rather, you're gonna need a real Android device running an Android API that supports low energy Bluetooth, where that Android device is also running base API 18 or above. However, there was a critical bug in base API 18 for Bluetooth, so you need 19 or above. A little bit confusing, well why do I say it? Because the documentation often points you to the wrong API version. And what else are you going to need? Well, you're going to need an actual beacon, right? So what I have here is a rad beacon dot from Radius Networks, and I've configured it to broadcast the UUID, major and minor values we've programmed earlier, and you'd think I'm right to go. However, a little warning. When you start testing with real Android devices, Bluetooth on some Android de devices has been notoriously bad. In fact, this Nexus 7 tablet had one of the worst Bluetooth implementations, its chip, that any device could have had. So you've got to be very careful that when you start out here that you're not actually testing a device that is totally, well, junk at Bluetooth support. Therefore, your beacon application is going to not work. So find a device that does work and then kick off your build. But later on, yes, you're going to have to code for these awful devices as well. Though admittedly in the latest Android devices, you know, the support for Bluetooth is a lot better. So I'm going to soldier on and what I'm now going to do is actually show you what happens when the Nexus 7 application detects the beacon. And I'm going to project that onto the screen now. So what I've done is I've started the application and I've started it monitoring for beacons. And what you can't see here is I'm now bringing the rad beacon dot into the range of the device, or actually vice versa, the device is now within the range of the beacon. And if we wait a short while, we see the message the app has entered the beacon region. And conversely, if I then turn off the beacon, we see the corresponding exit region message that we coded into our application. Alrighty, so in this video you've learned how to detect beacons with Android using the third party Android Beacon Library. So stick with us in the next video to learn how MCS can make this much more interactive and useful for real Android applications.